I may not look like it, but I was in prison for 21 years. I went to prison in 1993 at the age of 22. I had a 25 year sentence, a mandatory minimum for a first time nonviolent offense for a continuing criminal enterprise. I was sentenced to 304 months at 22 years of age. I grew up in the suburbs, so being thrown in prison, it was really something new to me. But I used to sell drugs, but I wouldn't consider myself not like I was a street dude, I wasn't a gang banger, I wasn't a mafioso. You know, I was in the suburbs, I was a deadhead, I sold drugs at colleges. You know, on the East Coast, LSD and marijuana, I never carried a gun or anything like that. So to be thrown into prison, really, it was a little bit of culture shock. I looked like a college kid, it's probably about 175 pounds, so, you know, I had a little size to me, but I wasn't a real big dude. You know, it's just like gang bangers, mafiosos, bank robbers, you know, a lot of the, the white skinhead prison gangs, Crips, Bloods, Latin Kings. What I remember most when I came in, I got to prove myself. I got to show who I am. You know, you see all the movies, you know, like Shawshank Redemption, American Me, and stuff like that. And I'm not gonna say that violence doesn't happen in prison. I'm not gonna say, you know, dudes don't get extorted, dudes don't get their stuff took, you know, even dudes get raped. I'm not gonna say none of that because it happens. But the way the movies, the way the movies show it, it's kind of the extreme. I mean, it can be kind of boring. You gotta find stuff to do. I mean, you know, you try to get a, a routine, you know, workout, work. You know, you got different dudes that you hang out with, you know, out on the compound. I really wanted to get in the mix. I wanted to, you know, I wanted to be somebody in prison as a young man. I went to SCI Manchester in 1993. That was a, almost a brand new prison in Kentucky. I came out of the compound and, uh, you know, it was kind of in the country. So, you know, you had, you had a lot of marijuana growers and stuff like that. Different dudes that I can relate with. You know, not necessarily dudes that I had done business with, but dudes that might have known people that I did business with. So I came in, you know, and I, I don't want to say I didn't want to make my bones. I wasn't trying to be in a gang. I wasn't trying to kill anybody or do stuff like that. But I wanted to prove, you know, that I belong because I had a lot of time to do. So I want to establish myself. I wanted to let dudes know, you know, that I wasn't the type of dude, you know, to be trifled with. I wasn't the type of dude that you were gonna take my stuff. I wasn't gonna be extorted. You know, I definitely wasn't gonna get turned out or anything like that. That definitely was not happening. I had to do what I had to do to establish myself. You know, and I don't have no gruesome war stories. Like I went and stabbed dude up like 50 times or busted his head. I didn't do no stuff like that. I got in fights. I got in a lot of little altercations. I had my nose broke a couple times. You know, I got a couple scars, you know, where I got hit, got my head split open. But I can say honestly, whatever I did, I gave as good as I got. And when it was over, pretty much, it was dead. You know, it was a handshake or just whatever. Don't talk to me, stay out of my way, I'm gonna stay out of yours. I played a lot of sports growing up. So I jumped right into the prison sports world. And really, when you're a white boy in prison playing sports, I mean, a lot of white dudes don't play sports for whatever reason. You know, they're not athletic, they're not trying to get out there, but I was playing everything. I was playing basketball, I was playing the uh, flag football, I was playing soccer with all the Mexicans. You know, that's how I did my time. I played sports, I worked out a lot. You know, I got into my workout room routine. I got into a car and started working out and I just stayed busy. You know, I was also, when I first came in, I, I was still, smoking a lot of weed and a lot of people may not think that you can't get drugs in prison or anything like that but i'm here to tell you you can pretty much anything you want i saw dudes shooting heroin getting heroin in i mean I, I was a little bit in shock you know at my sentence that i got that much time you know i don't think i deserve that much time i mean obviously it was the first time non-violent offense but you know they had the war on drugs was in full rage right then and they cracked me in the head so i i was a little bit uh you know, besides the cultural shock from being thrust in prison, I was a little bit in, in shock at my sentence. So that's what I did. I smoked marijuana every day. What we do is we get an ounce of marijuana and I would break it down into chapstick caps. And I would sell that for $25. But I might get an ounce for maybe five, six hundred, eight hundred, depending on who I got it from. I would break that down, 
you can get about 60 chapstick caps out of an ounce of marijuana and I would sell each of those chapstick caps for $25 or I might sell five of them for hundred dollars and how we got paid a lot of people in the real world they don't know you know how you get paid and stuff like that in prison but basically how you get paid if you buy a cap of weed from me and you owe me $25 I'm gonna give you a commissary list and you're gonna to go to commissary for me and you're gonna buy me the items I want or if you buy more like let's say you buy a hundred dollar piece which is like five caps of chapstick caps of marijuana you might send a hundred dollars you might put have your people put it on my account you know a lot of uh, my cases out of Virginia even though I grew up in California so I fell in with a lot of guys from Virginia and we had a little crew we used to call the regulators you know we used to go around all young dudes all dudes like maybe the oldest was maybe like 28 but all like 22 23 24 25 and uh, we used to go around and we used to regulate you know like like our people like the white dudes especially the dudes from Virginia like we would find out if someone was hot we check their paperwork you know we would check them in or you know we might even go uh, rob and extort them if we thought they were hot you know if their paperwork was good and they were a good dude you know then then it was cool you know as long as you know they stuck up for themselves but we didn't tolerate you know none of the bullshit you know if if dude was a pussy dude was a pussy we didn't fuck with no lames you know you, you had to be you know hardcore thorough or what we thought was hardcore thorough I mean looking back now I could say you know I was just a little kid acting out you know some type of facade because you know at the end of the day I, I'm not no tough dude or anything like that but I wanted to be at that time, I wanted to be one of the well-respected dudes. I wanted to be well thought of in prison. I wanted to be, you know, have dudes, you know, be kind of cautious around me. Like, what's this crazy white boy gonna do? But you know, that wasn't really me, but it was just kind of something, you know, facade or act that I put on. And at the time I was living it. So, I mean, in, in, in all actuality at the time, it probably was me.